My name is Ishal Abdul Halain. Welcome to my video on the 68K instructions. This is the fourth part from a six part series that will explain the instructions available for programming the 68K microprocessor. Now, let's begin with the shift and rotate instructions. The instructions in the shift and rotate group are used to shift and rotate data in registers. It is also used to swap data halves in registers. There are nine instructions altogether in this group. This first group of instructions are for shifting data while the instructions in this group are for rotating data. The swap instruction is the only instruction available to swap data halves. Now it's time for examples. The first example is the ASR instruction used to arithmetic shift write data in an operand. The number of times that the data is shifted can be specified by the programmer in a variable count in the instruction. Data is shifted one bit at a time until the number of shifts equals to the specified count. The general syntax shows that three variants are available for the programmer to use. The operand size is byte, word, and long word. All of the status registers are affected after execution of the ASR instruction. In this example, register D0 initially contains the hexadecimal value of D5. ASR.B3,D0 is to be executed, note that immediate data 3 specified in the instruction will shift the operand 3 bits to the right. During execution, register D0 is initially reconfigured as shown here. The C and X flags are connected to the LSB of D0, the MSB is fed back into itself. Now let's begin with the shift right operation. Data D5 is loaded into register D0. Then, the first shift to the right is executed. This causes the 1 in bit 0 to move into the C and X flags. The 0 in bit 1 is shifted into bit 0. The 1 in bit 2 is shifted into bit 1, and so on and so forth. However, since the MSB is reconnected to itself, a new one is written into bit 7 during the first shift operation. This shifting process is repeated 3 times. At the end of the second shift, D0 contains 11110101. The C and X flags are both 0. The third and final shift results in D0 equals 11111010. The C and X flags are both 1. Thus, the 32-bit hexadecimal value in D0 is 000000FA. The status register is 11001. X and C are both 1 because a 1 was shifted into both of them during the final shifting process. The N flag is 1 because FA is a negative 8-bit signed number, Z is 0 because the result is non-zero, the overflow flag, V, is 0 because no overflow occurred during the shift operation. Let's take a look at the ASL instruction used to arithmetic shift left data in a destination operand. The final results resides in the destination operand. The number of times that the data is shifted can be specified by the programmer in a variable count in the instruction. Data is shifted one bit at a time until the number of shifts equals to the specified count. The general syntax shows that also three variants are available for the programmer to use. The operand size is byte, word, and long word. All of the status registers are affected after execution of the ASL instruction. In this example, register D0 initially contains AA. ASL.B3, D0 is to be executed, note that immediate data 3 specified in the instruction will shift the operand 3 bits to the right. During execution, register D0 is initially reconfigured as shown here. The C and X flags are connected to the MSB of register D0, the LSB receives a new 0 every time a shift operation is executed. Now let's begin with the shift left operation. Data AA is loaded into register D0. Then, the first shift to the left is executed causing each bit to move one bit to the left. The C and X flag receives data shifted from the MSB of register D0. This shifting process is repeated three times. At the end of the first shift, D0 contains 01010100. The C and X flags are both 1. The second shift results in D0 equals 10101000. The C and X flags are both 0. The final shift causes the contents of register D0 to be 01010000 and the C and X flag are both 1. The 32-bit hexadecimal value in D0 is now 00000050. The status register is 10001. 
X and C are both 1 because a 1 was shifted into both of them at the final shifting process. The N flag is 0 because 50 is a positive 8-bit signed number in binary, Z is 0 because the result is non-zero, the overflow flag, V, is 0 because no overflow occurred during the shift operation. Let's take a look at the LSR instruction used to logical shift write data in a destination operand. The number of times that the data is shifted can be specified by the programmer in a variable count in the instruction. Data is shifted one bit at a time until the number of shifts equals to the specified count. The final shifted result resides in the destination operand. The general syntax shows that also three variants are available for the programmer to use. The operand size is byte, word, and long word. All of the status registers are affected after execution of the LSR instruction. To keep this video short, I am just going to show you the register structure for the LSR instruction. The operand's LSB is connected to the C and X flag. The MSB is fed with a new zero each time data is shifted. This is how the register structure looks like for the LSR instruction for an 8-bit operand. For word and long word operands, you just need to change the operand size to 16 bits and 32 bits respectively. Now, for the LSL instruction used to logical shift left data in a destination operand. The number of times that the data is shifted can be specified by the programmer in a variable count in the instruction. Data is shifted one bit at a time until the number of shifts equals to the specified count. The final shifted result resides in the destination operand. The general syntax shows that also three variants are available for the programmer to use. The operand size is byte, word, and long word. All of the status registers are affected after execution of the LSL instruction. Again, we are going to have a look only at the register structure for this instruction. The operand's MSB is connected to the C and X flag. The LSB is fed with a new zero each time data is shifted. This is how the register structure looks like for the LSL instruction for an 8-bit operand. Recall that it resembles the ASL structure. Anyway, if you use a word or long word operand, just change the operand size to 16 bits and 32 bits respectively. We begin the rotate instructions with the ROR instruction. It is used to rotate write data in a destination operand. The number of times that the data is rotated can be specified by the programmer in a variable count in the instruction. Data is rotated one bit at a time until the number of rotations equal to the specified count. The final rotated result resides in the destination operand. The general syntax shows that also three variants are available for the programmer to use. The operand size is byte, word, and long word. All of the status registers except the X flag are affected after execution of the ROR instruction. Again, we are going to have a look only at the register structure for this instruction. The C flag is connected to the LSB. The LSB is also connected to the MSB. Each time data is rotated, bit 7 data moves to bit 6, bit 6 to bit 5, bit 5 to bit 4 and so on and so forth. On the other hand, data in bit 0 is rotated around into bit 7. It is also moved into the C flag during rotation. The ROL instruction is used to rotate left data in a destination operand. The number of times that the data is rotated can be specified by the programmer in a variable count in the instruction. Data is rotated one bit at a time until the number of rotations equal to the specified count. The final rotated result resides in the destination operand. The general syntax shows that also three variants are available for the programmer to use. The operand size is byte, word, and long word. All of the status registers except the X flag are affected after execution of the ROL instruction. Again, we are going to have a look only at the register structure for this instruction. The C flag is connected to the MSB. The MSB is also connected to the LSB. Each time data is rotated, bit 0 data moves to bit 1, bit 1 to bit 2, bit 2 to bit 3 and so on and so forth. On the other hand, data in bit 7 is rotated around into bit 0. It is also moved into the C flag. The ROXR instruction is used to rotate write data in a destination operand. The number of times that the data is rotated can be specified by the programmer in a variable count in the instruction. Data is rotated one bit at a time until the number of rotations equal to the specified count. 
the final rotated result resides in the destination operand. The general syntax shows that there are three variants of addressing modes available for the programmer to use. The operand size is byte, word, and long word. All of the status registers are affected after execution of the ROXR instruction. Again, we are going to have a look only at the register structure for this instruction. The X flag is connected to the MSB. The LSB is connected to the C flag. The LSB is connected to the X flag. Each time data is rotated, bit 0 data moves into the C flag and also into the X flag. Data in the X flag is moved into the MSB. All of the bits in the operand moves to the right. The ROXL instruction is used to rotate left data in a destination operand. The number of times that the data is rotated can be specified by the programmer in a variable count in the instruction. Data is rotated one bit at a time until the number of rotations equal to the specified count. The final rotated result resides in the destination operand. The general syntax shows that there are three variants of addressing modes available for the programmer to use. The operand size is byte, word, and long word. All of the status registers are affected after execution of the ROXL instruction. Again, we are going to have a look only at the register structure for this instruction. The C flag is connected to the MSB. The X flag is connected to the LSB. The MSB is also connected to the X flag. Each time data is rotated, data in the X flag moves to bit 0. The operand moves to the left during each rotation. The MSB data is moved to the C flag and also to the X flag. That's all we have for now. I hope that you can study the swap instruction on your own. It's easy. Upon execution, data in bits 0 to 15 changes position with data in bits 16 to 32. Okay. I hope you have gained something new, have a nice day.